Morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or whenever you happen to be watching this, if you're watching the recording. And uh, blessed Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Just a couple of announcements I'd like to highlight from the bulletin and beyond the bulletin. One, just calling again to our faith formation families, to her attention to the faith formation news, particularly upcoming dates and news section, uh, talking about the Mondays with Mary and the rosary that is prayed every Monday, which you can join in online. Also, especially calling attention to the news for the First Holy Communion families, please check that out. And uh, please do take advantage of the Holy or First Holy Communion retreat online. And hopefully we can be together soon to prepare for First Communion in June. On the subject of the schedule beyond faith formation, uh, the bishop did issue some new directives as we move into the yellow phase of the COVID-19 restrictions. He has permitted uh, regularly scheduled confessions again, so we will resume our regularly scheduled confessions next Saturday at 4.15 and then each Saturday following. He has also permitted the public holy hours to be celebrated again, so we will resume our monthly holy hours this month. This month, it will be Thursday, May 28th from 6 to 7 o'clock. Stop in when you can, leave when you have to. Uh, the Eucharist will be exposed for that full hour. Also on the schedule, not for our parish, but for our diocese, uh, the priestly ordinations will move forward as scheduled. We have one of our own local boys being ordained to the priesthood this year, Joe Patron, and that ordination will be Friday, May 29th at 7 o'clock. It will be live streamed, so if you go to the diocesan website, uh, eriercd.org, you should be able to check that out again, live streaming the ordination of Joe and uh, the other seminarian on Friday, May 29th at 7 o'clock. Finally, again, the bishop's directives have uh, enabled the reopen. Well, he actually, we could have reopened the office sooner, but uh, because of the yellow phase now, it is allowing other businesses to open. So we will be opening the parish office to walk-in business beginning this Monday. It will be restricted hours. Uh, Melanie will be in the office Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for walk-in business. So again, uh, Melanie will be here Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for people who need to stop in and conduct parish business. Uh, otherwise, please do check the bulletin for contact information should you need to contact someone from the office outside of those hours. And then once we return to the green phase, uh, we'll reopen the office to full office hours. Praise with his 
Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You are the firstborn from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the conqueror of sin and death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the resurrection and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to be. constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those who are pleased to make new and holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. 
The proposal was accepted, was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a, holy, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you know the will of my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen. I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater one than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> to all our mothers out there, I'd like to offer a very heartfelt, happy female who gave us 50% of our DNA day. Thank you. Well, not as heartwarming as saying Happy Mother's Day, and maybe a bit harder to fit on the front of a greeting card. It is factually true, but not completely true. Ideally, our mothers share a lot more than just our DNA. They share their lives with us, their faith, their values and knowledge and wisdom. And most importantly, they share their love. All of that goes into making us who we are as we grow up. They are in us, and we are in them forever. That special bond is what we celebrate on Mother's Day. In today's gospel, Jesus tells his disciples, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. On one level, we could say that the bond that Jesus shares with the Father is similar to that shared between mothers and their children. But Jesus goes even further, saying, If you know me, you will know the Father. 
Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus doesn't just share his DNA with the Father, or even just his values, knowledge, and love. He shares his very being with the Father. The two of them are one, together with the Holy Spirit and the divine mystery of the Holy Trinity. That is what enables Jesus to say, you have faith in God, have faith also in me. Because Jesus is God. So if we want to know God, we need to know Jesus. Now, many of us think we know Jesus. We have lots of ideas about who he is and what he teaches. But having ideas about someone and truly knowing that person are two different things, as we see with Thomas and Philip in today's gospel. Even after all the time they've spent with him, three years seeing his miracles and hearing his teachings, they still do not know him. They've mistaken their own narrow ideas about Jesus for the real McCoy. Instead of putting their preconceived notions aside and opening their minds and hearts to let the real Jesus in. Christ's resurrection would change all that, blowing their minds with a completely new reality for which they had no concepts. It was their knowledge of the real Jesus, risen from the dead, that would completely change their lives, and through them, change the world. How often we can be like the pre-resurrection disciples, claiming our whole lives to believe in Jesus, but never really knowing him. Removing the actual Christ from Christianity, we substitute in our ideas for Christ, imagining him in ways that better suit our own ideology, politics, or comfort level. We cling to our own ideas as if we alone understand Jesus. Everyone else, even the Pope, if he disagrees with us, is wrong. This inevitably leads to infighting and divisions in the church and a failure on our part to carry out the mission of the church, to bring Christ to others. More ideas about Jesus will not solve this problem because Jesus is not an idea. What is needed is a rediscovery in each of our lives of the one true living Jesus who died and was buried 2,000 years ago, but who didn't stay buried. The Easter season provides an excellent opportunity to remember that as we celebrate the risen Jesus, alive and present in our midst. I know the COVID-19 crisis has made it hard for many people to see Jesus' presence in our lives today, especially as sheltering in place has kept people away from the mass where we experience Jesus' presence most clearly and powerfully. But if death itself could not keep Christ from being with his disciples, then surely COVID-19 can't. In fact, if there's any silver lining to the dark cloud hanging over us right now, it's that sheltering in place has given us the one thing many of us have been missing to improve our spiritual lives. Time. I suggest we use the time we've been given while sheltering in place to prayerfully reflect on the real Jesus. The best way to do this at home is by spending time with him in his word, especially the Gospels. I recommend reading each Gospel in its entirety, beginning with Mark, which is the shortest Gospel, and forms the skeleton which the other Gospels flesh out, each in their own unique ways. I suggest, too, that we not only read the Gospels, but pray with them. Turn off the TV and the other distractions. Settle into a comfortable, well-lit part of the house. Or if you have trouble finding peace and quiet in your house, 
Come here to God's house in the church. Ask God to make himself known to you in Jesus, whom you are about to encounter. Then slowly read each passage, pausing any time something strikes you, intrigues you, confuses you, or stands out in any other way. Spend some time with that passage, rereading it, and asking Jesus what's happening here and how he is revealing himself to you. Then, after your allotted time for spiritual reading has passed, at least about 20 to 30 minutes, thank God for revealing himself to you in Jesus and ask him to help you to live out your new, deeper faith in him. We have faith in God. Have faith also in Jesus. When we open our minds and hearts to let the real risen Jesus into our lives, God comes and makes his home with us. And he sends us out to go and do greater works even than these. Let's take the time this Easter season to get to know the real Jesus once again. And through him, to come to ever deeper faith in our God. I believe in one God, Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God, God, light, light, true God, true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, for the God, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayers together, we offer them to our Heavenly Father, who we know hears us and answers us. For the church, that we may live as God's chosen people, and follow Christ who is our way, our truth, and our life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers and those who have been showing us a mother's love, that God will watch over them, bless them with every good gift, and fill their hearts with peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are being ordained this spring, that God will fill them with the Spirit and help them to bring Christ's presence to all those lives they touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are graduating, that God will open pathways for them to find jobs, use their gifts, and fulfill their greatest dreams. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly those with COVID-19, that God will restore them to health and guide researchers in finding effective treatments and developing a vaccine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, particularly our mothers, that God will welcome them into the peace and joy of God's presence forever, and especially for the living and deceased members of St. Boniface Parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep in a special way in prayer throughout the Easter season, all those named in our prayer chain, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, too, in a special way for the young people of our parish preparing for their First Holy Communion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And gracious God, giver of all gifts, we thank you in a special way for the gift of your Son, who shows us who you are. We ask you to help us get to know him as he truly is, and so come to deeper faith in you. All in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh, <laughs> 